After 25 years in Photoshop, I just sold my Cintiq, canceled my Adobe subscription, and made the switch. And honestly, I should have done it way sooner. If you're a designer or an illustrator used to the Adobe ecosystem and you're thinking about switching to Procreate, this one's for you. Hey, I'm Nathan Brown, a bring your own laptop instructor and professional artist with 25 years of experience blending traditional techniques with a digital workflow. And today, Procreate is my number one tool. But when I first made the switch, I hit some unexpected friction and I wish someone had told me what I'm about to share. All right, let's start off with the biggest mindset shift that I had to make. Procreate is not Photoshop, and that's actually a good thing. After 25 years in Photoshop, I caught myself trying to treat Procreate like a desktop app, reaching for menus, keyboard shortcuts, panels, but that's not how Procreate works. And once you stop trying to use it like Photoshop, it clicks. Procreate is all about fluid, intuitive movement. Pinch to zoom, twist to rotate, two finger tap to undo, it's designed from the ground up for touch. And that's one of the things I love most about it. It removes the barriers between your hand and the artwork. You're not just operating software, you're drawing like you would with traditional tools, but with the advantages of a digital workflow. In Photoshop, I always felt tethered to a keyboard and a desk. Procreate feels more like picking up a sketchbook. It's fast, it's focused, it puts the drawing first. And yes, you'll miss some things at first, like layer styles, filters, menus, but honestly, the simplicity is freeing. Less software overhead, more art. So if Procreate feels weird, that's normal at first, but give it a day or two and you'll start to wonder why drawing and painting in Photoshop ever felt normal in the first place. Okay, next up, you don't need Illustrator. And honestly, I think that name has always been a little misleading. Illustrator sounds like it should be built for actual illustration, but it's really more for the construction of a graphic than the act of drawing. It's great for precise logos or layouts, but if you want expressive pencil to paper style sketching, that's not what Illustrator is made for. Here's the difference. In Illustrator, you're plotting points and wrestling Bezier handles. It's more like geometry. In Procreate, you just draw. You sketch something, you erase, you build it up. It's immediate and responsive. And if you're used to traditional media, it just feels right. For me, that's where Procreate really clicked. I could finally sketch the way I think. Whether I'm using a pencil brush, an inking brush, or a marker, it's natural, it's expressive, and it makes drawing more exciting. You also get way better line quality. The pressure sensitivity is amazing. You can taper strokes, vary line weight, and build texture without the need to fiddle with a bunch of settings or plugins. Yes, Illustrator has its place, but for drawing, Procreate blows it out of the water. Once you get used to it, you won't miss those Bezier handles one bit. Now this one really surprised me. You'll actually care about brushes now. In Photoshop, I used maybe two or three brushes for almost everything. I had my go-to round brush and hard and soft edges, a texture brush, and that was really it. I rarely thought about it. But Procreate, brushes are half the experience. They don't just get the job done, they influence how you draw. The feel, the flow, the textures, they're all part of what makes the process more fun and honestly, more creative. Procreate comes loaded with brush sets for everything. Pencils, inks, markers, watercolor, charcoal, and they actually feel like the tools they're named after. Now you can sketch a pencil layout, ink it with a brush pen, and add texture with pastels or dry media all in the same app. And if you're coming from a traditional background like I did, this is where Procreate really shines. You start thinking in media again and not just layers and settings. Once you get comfortable, you can build your own brushes or explore custom sets. I've made a bunch of brush packs myself that are based on real traditional media, and that's been a game changer in how I approach my own work. So if brushes were just an afterthought in Photoshop, don't be surprised when they become one of your favorite parts of working in Procreate. If you're used to working with a 100 layer Photoshop file, I've certainly been there. Procreate's layer limits might seem frustrating at first, but honestly, I've come to see them as a feature. Instead of endlessly duplicating and stacking things, I find myself working more intentionally. Wider files, cleaner structure, and less second guessing. In Photoshop, I've had files where just moving one layer meant scrolling through a nightmare of folders and masks. It gets chaotic fast. In Procreate, I'm forced to think ahead and I end up with way less clutter. And don't worry, you still get the powerful stuff. Alpha Lock is amazing for shading inside shapes. Clipping masks let you stack effects without messing up the base artwork. And you can group and label layers just like you're used to. Flattening layers used to make me nervous, but in Procreate, it's not such a big deal. Because I'm working with more intention, I trust the marks I'm 
making, and I'm not afraid to commit. Procreate keeps layer management artist friendly. Simple when you want it to be, but still powerful enough to get the job done. All right, now that's a lot of insight already, but we're just getting to the good stuff. If you're enjoying this and you want to go deeper into Procreate, covering the app from top to bottom, along with complete illustration workflows, check out the full Procreate Essentials course at bringyourownlaptop.com. There's a link below in the description. Now let's keep going. Let's talk about one of the biggest mental hurdles when switching from Illustrator or Photoshop. There's no pen tool in Procreate, but that's actually kind of amazing. I know if you're used to drawing with Bezier curves and anchor points, like I mentioned before, this can feel like a deal breaker at first, but stay with me. The pen tool is all about control and precision, but it's also slow. Every curve has to be manually adjusted, every shape constructed one piece at a time. In Procreate, if you want a perfect circle or line, use Quick Shape. It'll automatically snap your stroke into something clean, then you can make adjustments as needed. If you need even more control, there are stabilization settings that help you smooth out your lines without taking the hand-drawn feeling away. The more I worked in Procreate, the more I realized the pen tool wasn't helping me draw better, it was just helping me avoid drawing. Now, instead of building a drawing out of perfect curves, I actually draw the curves, and over time it's made me more confident and faster. So no pen tool might feel like a limitation at first, but once you lean into it, it's actually one of the best things about using Procreate. On the surface, Procreate looks super simple, and that's part of the appeal. It's clean, it's minimal, it's not overwhelming. But here's the thing that most people miss. You can customize Procreate way more than you think. For starters, you can rearrange and rename your brush sets. I keep mine organized by workflow, so sketching, inking, color, textures, so I'm not hunting through a massive list every time. You can also pin your favorite tools for fast access. And if there's something you do constantly, like switching to the eraser or using the color picker, you can assign it to a gesture. The gesture control menu is one of the most overlooked parts of Procreate. You can tweak almost everything to match your habits, whether you're left-handed, prefer one-handed drawing, or just want to speed things up. And here's a big one, split screen and the reference window. You can keep a reference photo open right on your canvas or split the screen with Safari, Notes, or Pinterest, whatever inspires you. Once I set up Procreate to match my workflow, everything got faster and a whole lot more fun. So if you haven't explored those customization options yet, take five minutes and play around. You'll be amazed at how much smoother everything feels. Now this last one's a little more personal, but maybe the most important. Procreate makes you want to draw more. Now, I didn't expect that. I thought it would be just another tool, a Photoshop replacement for illustration. But what I found was something way better. With Photoshop, I always felt like I had to boot up to work. It was a production. Launch the app, plug in the tablet, open a project, wait for everything to load. Procreate doesn't ask for any of that. You just pick up your iPad and draw. It's instant. And that tiny difference makes all the difference. It removes the barrier, which means less procrastinating, more experimenting, more drawing just for fun, and honestly, more finishing things too. Now, I've drawn more in the past few years using Procreate than I had in the decade before. That's why I sold my Cintiq. That's why I stopped using Photoshop for drawing and painting. And let's be real, the price doesn't hurt either. Procreate is a one-time payment. Compared to Creative Cloud subscription, it's kind of a no-brainer. So if you've been feeling stuck or uninspired, just give it a shot. Procreate might be the thing that gets you excited to create again. So that's everything I wish someone had told me when I first made the jump from Photoshop to Procreate. Whether you've already made the switch or you're just thinking about it, I hope this gave you a clearer picture and maybe saved you a few headaches. Even if you're not ready to cancel your Adobe subscription just yet, try using Procreate on your next project. You might be surprised how fast it clicks and how fun it is. Now I'd love to know what was the one thing that confused you the most when you first tried Procreate? Drop it in the comments below. And if you're ready to go deeper, check out Procreate Essentials, my full course course with Bring Your Own Laptop. It's packed with step-by-step -step projects, skill-building exercises, and even quizzes, all designed specifically for designers learning Procreate. There's a link for it in the description below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you there.